来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来来。Shalom, everybody. Special welcome to the Baker family. Excited for Elijah's bar mitzvah tomorrow, uh, and uh, uh, and we get we don't have all four kids. I don't see all four kids. That's okay. But we have we have oldest and youngest. Yeah, and then oh, good. Oh, there you are. So uh, so welcome everybody. Shabbat shalom. Uh, we're gonna invite Linda Barr. So Linda, where's Linda? I saw her pulling. Oh, there you are. Let me see. Our, uh, our temple president to share announcements and welcome everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. First tonight, thank yous of course. Thank you to Noah for accompanying us tonight. And most importantly, not that you're not important, Noah, um, but most importantly, thank you to the Baker family. Elijah's uh, bar mitzvah is tomorrow at 1030 and the congregation is invited. And as I heard somebody, some little tiny voice say, Happy Bar Mitzvah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. happy Bar Mitzvah, Elijah. Yeah. And that little baby is, like, too cute. So. Yeah, right. so, we're looking forward to your Bar Mitzvah tomorrow, and I'm sure you're going to do exceedingly well. And it's obvious tonight by the number of family you have here. They're all rooting for you, too, Elijah. Okay? All right. And so, thank you to the family for doing all the blessings tonight. Appreciate it. Also, uh, we've been talking about this, Passover, coming up in April, April 22nd. Um, we would like, if anyone has room for individuals that don't have a place at a Seder table, that you would make room at your Seder table for them. So if you have a place or two or three, or you need a seat at a table, please contact the temple office and we will match you up. Trust us. Um, next is April 23rd is the second night Seder here at Temple. So we're looking forward to that also. It's been a few years since we uh, had that. So we're hoping as many people come as possible. Also, confirmation, April 12th. We have a lot of confirmants. Seven, I think. Do I have that mm -hmm. number right? Yeah, okay, seven. seven confirmants, which is a lot this year. All right, so we're looking forward to that. And there's going to be a, I think, Kylie, you're calling it a pre -neg? Um, yes. that is the Oneg before <laughs> services that evening to welcome the um, confirm confirmants. And Bunko and Brunch is coming up April 14th for the religious school parents. That's kind of wild, I hear. Um, I don't know. I'm too old to come, but I hear that's wild, so get there. And I think that is going to be pretty much it to make sure that I didn't uh, – forget anything here. I did not. The rest is coming up much later, so we'll catch that next week. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat, Shabbat shalom. shalom. If you'll turn to those around you, welcome everybody. Say Shabbat shalom to your neighbors, uh, especially to all the, the Baker family who's uh, here as our guests. And we'll invite uh, Elijah, you and your parents and siblings, if you want, to join you and Lighting our Shabbat candles. The blessing is found on page two, uh, and then holding the Kiddush cup for our blessing over Kiddush. Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we, by our lives, give light to all who behold us. As the
their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we in our own day be among those who kindle light. Baruch. You can light the candles. Yeah, go ahead and light the candle. You can light the candle. If you can hold up the cup. If you hold up the cup there, Elijah, you can hold the Kiddush cup. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Borei peri ha'gafen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Asher kiddushanu b'mitzvot ha'varatzav anu, V'shabak kocho b'yahava uvratzon hinchilanu, Zikaron l'masi v'reishit, Ki hu yom t'chila l'mikra e'kodesh Zeche l'tziyad mitraim Ki vanu v'charta v'yotanu ki dashta Mikol ha'amim v'shabat kodshecha v'yahavah Uvratzon in Chatanu, Baruch Hataronai, Mekadesh Hashabat, Amen. Thank you. We enter this sanctuary to welcome Shabbat. Within these walls, we sit surrounded by numberless generations. Our ancestors built the synagogue as a visible sign of God's presence in their midst. And throughout our long history and our endless wanderings, it has endured a beacon of truth, love, and justice for all humanity, its presence guided by our ancestors to lives of righteousness, holding up to them a vision of their truest selves. And so now, we, in our turn, come into this sanctuary to affirm the sacredness of our lives, the sacredness of our community, and the sacredness of Shabbat. We begin with Hine Matov, page 10. How lucky and blessed we are to be here with each other. The top of page 10. Hine Matov, Shabbatim Gam Yachar. Hine Matov Manai, Shabbatim Gam Yachar. Hine Matov Manai, Shabbatim Gam Yachar. Hine Matov Manai. Shevarachim gam yachar, Hine matov umanayim. Shevarachim gam yachar, Hine matov umanayim. Shevarachim gam yachar, Hine matov umanayim. Shevarachim gam yachar Hine matov umanayim Shevarachim gam yachar Shevarachim gam yachar Shevarachim gam yachar We turn to page 20 in our prayer books. The words of Lachad Odi to welcome Shabbat uh, into our sanctuary and into our homes. Uh, it's also a reminder, uh, as I've been trying to remember myself, that 
so many of those who join us join us online. Uh, and we uh, just last week we're discussing how nice it is when you all say hello to each other. So we can't see you, but you can see each other. So if you're at home uh, and you're joining us online, please wish each other Shabbat Shalom. Um, help reach out to members of our community, and then and we like to go back later in the week and see who who said hello or not. So we'll we'll check on in on you too. It's, it's a good it's a good way to uh, to see everybody who's there. So please. Uh, let's welcome Shabbat together, page 20, L'chad Udi. At the end of the prayer, we'll stand and face our door, the entrance to our sanctuary, the entrance to our homes, as we welcome Shabbat. L'chad Udi mikrat kala, b'nei Shabbat nekabela. L'chad Udi mikrat kala, b'nei Shabbat nekabela. The Chad Adonai Echad Shemo Echad B'Shem O'Tiferet B'Lit Gila L'Echad O'Di L'Echad O'Di L'Ikra Kala B'Nei Shabbat Mekabela L'Echad O'Di L'Ikra Kala B'Nei Shabbat Mekabela Shabbat lechu v'nilcha Ki hi mekor ha'merocha Ve'erosh mikedem nesucha Sof ma'aseh b'mashcha v'tchila L'chad u'di L'chad u'di l'ikrat kala B'nei Shabbat nekabela L'chad u'di l'ikra kala P'nei Shabbat nekabela Verse 5 Hii toreri, hii toreri Ki va'oret kumi uri 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 Shir daberi K'vodat onai ala yichnila L'chad u'di Please rise as you're able and face the door in body or in spirit or to your home. Bohi v'shalom ateret bala Gam v'simcha v'sochola Toch emuni am segula Bohi chala, bohi chala L'chad u'di L'chad u'di l'ikra kala B'nei Shabbat nekabela L'chad u'di l'ikra kala Page 26, we remain standing. Yikado, Yikado, Shemei Rabba, Be'omadi Brahi Rutei, Be'omlich Mokutei, Be'cha Yechon, Uv Yom Echon, Uv'cha Yedecho Be'et Yisrael, Ba agala, ba agala, uviz man kari, vimeru amin, yehish me raba mevarach, le alam wal me almaya, yit barach, yit barach, vishtabach, vayit par vitroma vayit nasik, vitadar, vitale, vitalal, Shemed kudasha barichu la'ela min kol brachata v'shirata tush brachata v'nechemata da'amiran ve'oma 
Primaru Amin. The bottom of page 29. What does it mean to be called to worship? All serious activity requires preparation. The prayers and blessings that precede the Barhu are warm ups for each of us. Now we enter communal prayer. And the leader asks, Are you ready to pray? And we respond, Yes. So, whatever we must do to be ready to be a part of this community, to not enter just as an individual, but to know that we are here as part of Temple Israel in this space at this time, celebrating with this family on this special Shabbat for them, but also bringing whatever our week has given us or taken from us into this space. We now join together as a congregation, page 28, as we face east towards Israel and share the words of our call to, call to worship the Baruch Hu. Blessed are you, God, ruler of the universe, who allows us to distinguish between that which is dark and that which is light, to see day and to see evening. And as we enter into this evening, if our fears increase, to know that we have the ability to see light not only in the sky, but also in the students who come before us, who lead us in Torah, who teach us on the Shabbat, and the bright young faces of those who will be our future leaders. Baruch Ata Adonai, Hama'ariv Aravim. We are blessed to see the difference between evening and day, between darkness and light. Amen. Ahavat Olam, page 32. Ahavat Olam, Beit Yisrael, Amcha Ahavata, Amcha Ahavata, Torah Umitzvot, Chukim Umishpati. Pages 34 and 35. 
Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Seated as we are proud to invite Elijah to lead us in Via Hafta, page 36. Please join with him. Via Hafta, Ed Adonai Eleha, Behola Baha, Uveho Nashaka, Uveho Meodeha, Behayu, Advarim Haela. I share on a key, mit of a ha, ha yo malava veha, fishing on tam lava neha, fiddy barta bam, fishy to ha, bave teha, uve ha va derech, usho beha, uf kumeha, ukshar tam leo dao ya deha, feha yula tatafo, bene neha. Uktav tam, amizuzo beteha, uvi shareha. Laman tis karu, fasi tem eko mitzvotai, fiat tim kadoshim leloehem. Ani, adonai eloehem, a share hote ti at hem, meret mitzrayim. Leot lahem lelohim ani Adonai eloheihem. Adonai eloheihem emet. Wonderful. Thank you, Elijah. Page 39, please join me responsively as we prepare to share the words of Micha Mocha. In a world torn by violence and pain, a world far from wholeness and peace, give us the courage to say, Adonai, there is one God in heaven and earth. The high heavens declare your glory. May, May earth, earth reveal, reveal your justice, justice and, and love. love. From bondage in Egypt, we were delivered. At Sinai, we bound ourselves to your way. Inspired, Inspired by, by prophets and instructed, instructed by sages, sages time, time and again, again we overcame oppressive forces. forces. Though our failings are many and our faults are great, it has been our glory to bear witness to our God, keeping alive in dark ages your vision of a world redeemed. Let us continue to work for the day when the nations will be one and at peace. Then shall we rejoice as Israel did, singing on the shores of the sea. We turn the page, page 40, the words from Exodus. <laughs> Malachut hara uvanecha, bokea yamitne, moshe miriam, ze elianu vi ameru, ze elianu vi ameru, adonai loch le ulam bait, adonai loch. The Olam Vaev Micha Mocha Vaelim Adonai Micha Mocha Neidar Bakodesh Nora Tehillot Osefele Nora Tehillot Osefele A friend called me this afternoon A phone call I've now become familiar with I imagine some of you have too he said, do you have any place I could stay on April 7th and 8th? <laughs> uh, as people are realizing that's like the Super Bowl in Northeast Ohio. Uh, that uh, The answer is no, by the way. That was claimed months ago by, uh, by a good old friend who, who was way ahead of the curve. Um, but he, uh, he explained to me that, that last time uh, this happened, he also traveled to, uh, to experience the eclipse. And uh, in some ways, in response to my mocking the idea that everybody should rush to Northeast Ohio, uh, he said, it's actually amazing that, that it goes dark for a period of, even though it's just a few minutes, it's like the whole world gets quiet. It feels like the wind stops blowing, the, 
the crickets start to chirp. It's like all of a sudden you go from what is a busy and, and uh, you know, lively part of the day to what is the very middle of the night, and, and nature just seems to adjust in a moment. And I mention that because I think when we, uh, when we share the words of Hashki Venu, uh, we're sharing a prayer that is intended to help us find that moment when perhaps that's not how we're feeling as the evening begins. That too often as the day fades and as the night gets dark, it's not a sense of quiet that we find, but rather a sense of worry and a sense of exhaustion from our day. And instead, Hashki Venu says, let there be a sense of peace for us, a quiet, a pause, in order for us to believe that all that is good and, and involves growth and, and love and, uh, and reaching out to those around us, that that will come back tomorrow, and that tomorrow will be yet another better day than today, we hope. Uh, and so we should have a sense of peace and calm and even excitement about the future and not the fear and the anxiety that often comes as the world gets darker every night. And so we share these words as we, uh, as we welcome in a few days the thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who are all going to stay in our homes, uh, but also as we honor the idea that we should have every night a few moments of peace and quiet uh, in the darkness as we prepare for the next day. Page 42. <laughs> Hashki venu Adonai Eloheinu l'shalom, l'shalom. Ve'hamidenu shomreinu l'chaim. Ufros aleinu sukat shlom echa, ufros aleinu sukat shlom echa. from all harmful things Oh Adonai Keep us safe throughout the night Till we wake with morning's light Teach us God wrong from right Oh God's presence to suffuse our spirits, God's will to prevail in our lives. It may not bring water to parched fields or mend a broken bridge or rebuild a ruined city, but it can water an arid soul, mend a broken heart, and rebuild a weakened will. We turn to our personal prayers now, a series of prayers beginning on page 46 and going through page 60 that begin by reaching back into our history, into the ancestors that began our people and ending with the very present, with the words that we will create on our own in our own silent prayer to seal this series of prayer, prayers called the Amidah. Page 46, please rise as we begin together. Adonai, Sifatai Tiftach, Ufi Agita Hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu velohe avoteinu ve'imoteinu. Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzhak, Elohe Yaakov. Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah. El Hagadol Hagibor Vahanora El Ayon 
גומר חסדים טובים וקונה הכל וזוכר חסדי אבות ואימהות ומביא גאולה לפני ביניהם למען שמו באהבה מלך עוזר ומושיע ומגן ברוך אתה אדוני מגן אברהם ועזרת שרה אתה גיבור לעולם אדוני מחיי הכל אתה רב להושיע משיב הרוח ומוריד הגשם מחוקל חיים בחסד, מחיי הכל ברחמים רבים, סומך נופלים ורופך עולים, ומתיר אסורים, ומקיים אמונתו לשני עפר, מחמוך בעל גבורות ומידו מלך, מלך ממית ומחיה, ומצמיח ישוע, ונאמן אתה להחיות הכל, ברוך אתה אדוני, מחיה הכל. אתה הקדוש, ושמך הקדוש, וקדושים בכל יום יהללו לך הסלע, ברוך אתה אדוני, האל. HaKadosh. Please be seated if you'd like. On page 57, Ritzei Adonai Eloheinu, Be'amcha Yisrael, God, be with us in our prayer, in our love, in our doubt, in our longing to feel your presence and do your will. Be the still clear voice within us. Therefore, when doubt troubles us and anxiety makes us tremble, when pain clouds our minds, we look inward for the answer to our prayers and pray that we find you along with courage and insight and endurance. We ask that our worship bring us closer to one another, that all Israel and all who seek you find new strength for your service. Baruch Ata Adonai, Sha'otacha Levadacha Biyira Na'avod. Page 60, Shalom Rav, our prayer for overwhelming peace to find its way to the world. Shalom Rav, Al Yisrael Amcha, Tassim Le'olam. Shalom Rav, Al Yisrael Amcha, Shalom Rav Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam Shalom Rav Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam Ki Ata Hu Melech Adon Lechol HaShalom Ki Ata Hu Shalom Rav Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam Shalom Rav Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam V'tov Einecha Levarech Et Amcha Yisrael Shalom Rav Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam Shalom Rav Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam Tassim Le'olam for our own personal prayers.
Shalom bim Roma, who ya says shalom aleinu. O says shalom bim Roma, who ya says shalom aleinu. Ya says shalom, ya says shalom, shalom aleinu. May I call Israel. Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom aleinu ve'alko Yisrael. Ose shalom bim Roma, who yase shalom aleinu. Ose shalom bim Roma, who yase shalom aleinu. Ose shalom bi Roma, who ya says shalom aleinu. Ya says shalom, ya says shalom, shalom aleinu ve alko Yisrael. Ya says shalom, ya says shalom, shalom aleinu ve alko Yisrael. Ose shalom bim Roma, who ya says shalom aleinu. Shabbat shalom. So I want everybody to to focus on our menorah, not the not not the Hanukkah menorah, but the menorah that's up here. And notice that there's one light out. How many noticed that already? These are all your Type A people in the room. <laughs> Already, they already knew that the light was out, uh, because this week's Torah portion uh, is all about uh, what is called an Eish Tamid, the eternal fire. It's related to or even becomes what is known as the Ner Tamid, which is not the candelabra there, but this uh, modern version of the light that never goes out, that's always on uh, in a sanctuary. The verse itself says, uh, The fire on the altar shall be kept burning, not to go out. Every morning the priest shall feed wood to it, lay out the burnt offering on it, and turn into smoke the fat parts of the offerings, you know, the, the, uh, the sacrifices that they would make to make the fire really big. Uh, and then it says, Eish tamid, it shall be an eternal fire to be kept burning forever, which the first thing you might think is, well, don't we have that rule that you're not supposed to have a fire on Shabbat? It seems like Leviticus didn't know that rule yet because the priest was supposed to light the fire every day, eternally, keep it going. Uh, because over the years, the idea of a flame or a fire or light, we seem to play with it a little bit. Fire in, in this sense... When we think of it as something that's burning on an altar, something that you're adding oil to to make it larger, if you imagine millions of people gathered in the wilderness, a fire that would call God down, as it says in biblical language, something that consumes things and feeds God, that requires sacrifices. I like to think of it more like marshmallows around a campfire. That you, you gather. When you build a fire like that, people just want to gather around. It says... This should be the center of where you are. You should put your focus here. And, of course, fire is something needed for survival, for warmth and heat, for cooking, for safety, for making tools or maybe even weapons. That's one version of the fire. And if we take that metaphorically, if you'll hang with me just for a moment, think about how we use that now in modern terms. We talk about fire as a passion, of something burning within, of perhaps anger, that we get red hot, that when things spread, they spread like wildfire. That's, that's fire when it's large. And in Leviticus, one version of the fire that was burning in the temple was to understand it as this big, large fire. That's what the original text might imply. But, pardon the pun, 
The rabbis play with fire, and they think of it differently years later. They say, no, the perpetual fire was actually more of a light, a candle, like Shabbat candles. A classmate and friend of mine, Rabbi Daniel Michael Berg, wrote a wonderful Devar Torah an article published online. He reminds us that light in this way is a source of solace, not a source of anger and fear or power, nothing that gathers in the masses, but rather think of the light in Judaism of Shabbat candles set on a table for an intimate meal, or a yardsite candle remembering a loved one, a single candle on the mantle that reminds us of the faces of our parents or spouses or friends that we've lost. It's almost romantic. It's in some ways more like the Ner Tamid, that sliver of a light that comes down in the middle of the sanctuary. It reminds us to look within, to find what's hidden in the small ways, not to gather in the masses, not to be filled with passion, but rather to have passion that's intimate. What uh, one rabbi, Shai Held, who's a modern author, he wrote that the eternal light is not a description of light, but rather light is describing the eternal. What is eternal is lit. Can we do that from within. Martin Buber, who many of us are studying this year in Torah study, he talks about how too often we want the eternal to be some faraway place, heaven. And there's a story he tells where he says, people say, well, when, when I get to heaven, I want it to look familiar. I want it to be lit up like my hometown, like Akron, Ohio. I want it to look like Market Street so that I feel like I'm at home there. I want the lights to look the same. Linda thinks not like Market Street. Okay, you can pick a different street. What's, in college, what's the main street in College Station? And so, oh, what, Happy Valley, sorry. Uh, that's right. What am I thinking? I know, I know, terrible. <laughs> I've been traveling too much. So Boober says, we shouldn't ask that heaven be familiar to us like our hometown. We should ask the opposite. Where we live should look like heaven because too often, we think that God exists somewhere else, that I have to go somewhere to get to a promised land, when in fact, where we are right here, if we were to take a little light and illumine our lives and not look for something far off, that we'd have it right where we are. That's the idea of a Shabbat table. A Shabbat table can be anywhere. Two candles, a glass of wine, people sitting around a table together. Buber would say, you already have heaven where you are. Stop looking for it somewhere else. I find that we're constantly bouncing between these two poles. The idea of light that is a fire of passion and anger and uh, responding to how we might survive in the world and the light within, the intimate, quiet voice, we might call it sometimes, trying to uncover who we really are, what we really need, what's really important to us. Not a loud voice, but a soft, quiet whisper a little candle. I want to place these two images before you and take a big shift. Uh, we'll come back to it. But some of you may have seen, some of you might have not have seen. Uh, at the cover of this month's The Atlantic, uh, the lead article is, The Golden Age of American Jews is Ending. I got, I got the early, as many people did, the email version of the article. I had no idea where. Sometimes they email you an article and it never shows up in the magazine. I thought, okay, maybe it'll be in the magazine or not, let alone it's the cover, right? So it's like a billboard that says, the golden age of American Jews is ending. So the first thing we learned from this is there was a golden age of American Judaism, and we lived in it. The sad part of it is that it seems to be quite a big piece of news worthy of the cover of a major magazine that someone, Jewish man, uh, by the name of Franklin Foyer, feels that this age might be over. And perhaps we're not so surprised that one might say that where we are in history at this very moment. We might not know that for sure, but we might not be surprised that somebody would think that way. So I want to offer a brief response and a little bit of a nod to the idea of what type of fire we look at. So first, 
let's talk about golden ages. Judaism has had many golden ages. Biblically, the unified kingdom of Israel, what we might know from the book of prophets as the kingdoms of Saul and David and Solomon, we could call that a golden age. There is what is actually called the golden age of Judaism in Spain in 7th, 8th, 9th century common era when Jews and Muslims and Christians more or less are thought to have lived incredibly well together and Judaism flourished academically. Some of our greatest thinkers come out of that era. We look at our architecture today, a lot of it it links back to that period in Spain. We might even think of pre-war Germany in the last 200 years. Think of the great Jewish thinkers of Europe who were coming out of Berlin and Vienna and Frankfurt and all these incredible places in Western and some in Eastern Europe. And of course, as the article describes, we think of the last 100 years. The two large Jewish communities the one in Israel as Israel was created to be a state, and the second in America as American Judaism has flourished. And of course, we know there have been low points as well. The temples of Saul, David, and Solomon were destroyed not once but twice. The Spanish implemented the Inquisition. Germany became home to the Holocaust. Ups and downs, golden ages and deep, deep dark valleys. That's Jewish history. And so the article proposes that we're on the verge of the next fall. It's possible. I can't predict. But I want to share now back to our fire. Because I think instead of saying that something is ending, if we were to look back through Jewish history, we'd say there have been many beginnings to Judaism, some mythical, some real. But mostly, Jewish history is about transitions from one to the other, from high points to low points and back to high points again. And so perhaps it would be better, he didn't ask me, but it would have been better, maybe it wouldn't have sold as many papers, if his article was Judaism entering a time of transition. And so I want to go back to the flame that was seen in our Torah portion. The Israelites are in the wilderness not knowing what's next. Some Israelites believe they're on the verge of creating a great society. These are the promised land Israelites. They believe they're on a journey to the most amazing civilization ever on earth. They look to the light that's in their very humble tabernacle, what later becomes the great temple. And they say that light is a small, intimate candle that reminds them how perfect this space is. But there's another group of Israelites. They believe they're doomed. They don't know where they will get their next meal. They're living in the wilderness, after all, and they've had 400 years of slavery. They don't know how to do anything other than build pyramids. They're afraid. They're angry. They've just been punished for the golden calf. Moses keeps making promises, and they don't always turn out the way he says. It takes a long time to do things. They want to survive, so they look at the flame that's burning in the temple, and they see a big fire. Because when you're afraid and you're angry, you want something that calls everybody together, something that burns big, that reflects how angry you are and the injustice that you feel in the world. And yet, the two groups living side by side were looking at the very same flame. Some of them call it an ish tamid, a huge burning fire, and some of them call it a ner tamid, a little burning flame that will never go out. My hypothesis is that during the golden ages of Judaism, the times of relative Jewish comfort and prosperity, we see the flame as a candle very easily. We look out at the world and focus on building beautiful sacred spaces, beautiful synagogues, on realizing that what is important to us, God, community, heaven are right here, and all we need is a little candle to show us that if we just take a moment of silence with those we love, Judaism will show the promised land to us right where we are. But during the harsher times of Jewish history, we see the flame as that of a burning fire. We wonder how to make the place where we are a safe haven. We burn with anger and see the injustice that hits us personally. We're filled with worry about how we will survive, so we want a flame that proves our detractors wrong, 
that calls all our people together, that unifies us the way Israel has been unified after their recent debates over judicial reform in just one day that becomes a beacon that scares our enemies away because they see how passionate we are. In his article, Foyer points out the successes of American Jews in the last century as sort of a litmus test of the golden age. He writes about Ralph Lauren and Barbara Streisand and Jerry Seinfeld and Elie Wiesel. I imagine if the article was written this week instead of last month, he would have mentioned Joe Lieberman, who passed away just a few days ago. The fact that America would have a vice president who was proudly Jewish, religious, a mensch, that's a sign of a place where a candle stands and we say, look, we've made it. Not just because these people were famous, but because they impacted America. That's part of what Foyer points out. They paved the roads they walked as though they were in heaven. And during this time, I'd like to point out, we worked hard to focus on values of justice, because I believe Judaism is always countercultural. Perhaps because the inner light of Jewish expression came easy to us in the last golden age century of Judaism, we did the hard work of emphasizing on tikkun olam and tzedakah, in addition to supporting the new Jewish state in its infancy, because when the candle is easy to see, we have to make an extra effort to focus on our passion, on the parts of the world that upset us, anger us, and disturb us. So we did that. We look back at the last 50 years especially, it's social justice that often defined the organized Jewish community. I think that was intentional as a response to the golden age we were living in. And if that's no longer the case, if anger comes easy to us, if we're disturbed regularly, if we feel an injustice simply by being Jewish, then perhaps a different fire is burning. Foyer writes the following. Extremism on the right begets extremism on the left, which begets extremism on the right, and so on and so forth. He calls this a death spiral of politics. If that's where we are, then we will turn easily to the flame of the fire. So we have to be intentional about not forgetting the flame of the candle. Every Sunday, I'll leave you with this image. Every Sunday when we have religious school, as Elijah knows well, we close with Havdalah. We're in this room, we dim the lights, we light a Havdalah candle, and we invite the kids and the teachers and their parents to hold their hand up to the candle to block the flame, to block the light out, or to let it in. What's great about kids is they really believe you, <laughs> and they do it. And so the room is a room of 100 or so people with this braided candle. The lights are dim, almost out. All the kids believe they can block the light out or they can let it in just by turning their hand, which of course they can. It implies something else. It implies that we have the ability to see the light the way we want to see it. We can see it as a big, burning, passionate flame that calls us to action. Or we could cover it with our hand and see it differently, like a game of peekaboo with an infant, and say, no, I need to see today a candle that reminds me that heaven is right where I am, that I just need a table, a kiddush cup, some friends, and I have everything I need. I hope if Foyer is right, and we're in a pivotal moment of change in the Jewish world, I hope as anger and all those things that disturb us, fear, those things that threaten the unification of our world, but also of the Jewish people, that as those come easy to us without us asking for them, and as we see this large flame, or perhaps we create it to bring people together, that we also are countercultural the way we have been the last 50 years, that we light Shabbat candles so that we remind ourselves of the intimate spaces that we need, because we can't live simply on fear and anger and a lack of hope. We need to pave the places we live as though they are heaven as well. And so we always need both. It's just that it's sometimes it's easier to see one than it is to see the other. But I hope we'll believe as our children do that with the quick switch of a hand, 
we can make that change wherever we need it and however we need it in our lives. Shabbat Shalom. We'll turn now to our prayers for those who are in need of healing. Page 253, the words of Misha Berach. for the words of Alenu, page 282. <laughs> Umishachavim umodim, leaf name Melech, Mahe ham lachim ha kadosh baruchu, Venemar, Vehaya donai, the Melech al koharetz, Bayom havu, Bayom havu, Yia donai echad, Ushemu. Please be seated. Our thoughts turn now to those who've departed this earth, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people whose graves are unmarked, and those of every race and nation whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. As we remember them, we meditate on the meaning of love and loss of life and death. We continue to remember Daniel Katz, whom we've lost in this past month. And we add to his name the yard sites of Ina Adler, Isaac Averbach, Evelyn Bayer, Murray Cohen, Molly Dutchman, Abe Fetterman, Benjamin Finkel, Belle Frost, Julius Frost, Jane Gibbs, Richard Gibbs, Clara Heimlich, Janet Heinz, David Hilton, Lois Holtze, Roy Kirshner, Samuel Klausner, Albert Kondritzer, Eleanor Lippmann, Robert Mitchell, Rosalind, Rosalind Mitchell, Dr. Irvin S. Morris, Pearl Pomerantz, Charles Rich, Samuel Rosenblum, Rose Rubenstein, Hannah Schwartz, Hilda Sobel, Maria Sunik, Claire Susselman, and Helen Wides. If there are names I mispronounced or names you'd like to share, please share them. Page 
page 294, oh, sorry. Page 294, please rise as we share together in Mourner's Kaddish. Yit Kadal, Yit Kadash, Shemei Rabbah, V'alma, Divrach, Hirute, V'amlich, Malchute, V'chayechon, Uv'yomechon, Uv'chaye, Dechol, Beit Yisrael, Bagala Uv'izman, Kari, Vimru, Amen. Yehe, Shemei Rabbah, M'varach, Le'olam, Olmei, Olmaya, Yit Barak, V'yishtabak, V'yit Pa'ar, V'yit Romam, V'yit Nase, Vita dar, vita le, vita lal, shame de kudisha, berichu. Leela min kol birchata vishirata, tush bechata venechamata, damiran belma vimru, amen. Yehe shlama raba min shemaya, bechaim alenu vial kol Yisrael, vimru, amen. O se shalom bimramav, huya se shalom, alenu vial kol Yisrael, vimru, amen. Having connected with those that we've loved and lost, we invite you, if you'd like, to connect with those around you as we bless each other with the words of the priests. <laughs> May God bless you and keep you. May God's light shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May you feel God's presence within you always. May you find peace. Please be seated as we'll invite uh, people to share any uh, blessings of this week. Certainly the blessing that uh, the Baker family is having with Elijah becoming a bar mitzvah. Uh, so we wish mazel tov on you. Are there other, other blessings this week? Yeah, Dina. Dina, some, some of us know Dina's been working on uh, what's called the last mitzvah, which is to write an entire Torah yourself. So you finished Genesis. Wow. Well, a fifth of the way there. Well done. Other, uh, any other blessings? Nothing. Nothing exciting. So for all the for all the good things in our lives, uh, the new people and the bar mitzvah, uh, the bar mitzvah young men uh, to be, we offer a shachianu, a blessing that we can be together for these and many more moments like them. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Shehechianu vekimanu vehigianu lazman hazeh. Amen. Baker family, if you'll hold our hala, Elijah, you want to grab the hala, you can stand with your family. Yeah, take the cover off. You can hold it up high. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz Amen. Shabbat Shalom, you're welcome to have some hala. Share with your sister. Shalom Salam, 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 Pick it up now. Ojevo shalom malenu, Ojevo shalom malenu, Ojevo shalom malenu, Vea kulam. Ojevo shalom malenu, Ojevo shalom malenu, Ojevo shalom malenu, Vea kulam. Shabbat shalom.